At that point, she just said to the principal, well, he's annoying. He deserved it. If I had done that, I would have been suspended. If I were to actually write my test, it would take me four times as long as the average person. Many autistic individuals prefer the word supports instead of the word accommodations because accommodations really suggest that society's doing us a favor when those supports are our right. They're not a privilege. Hi everyone, I'm Jake Anthony. I'm the Program Ambassador for Autism BC. Hello there, I'm Jeanette T. Bundick, and I'm one of the content collaborators at Autism BC. Today I'm going to talk a bit about my experiences going through the school system and what was helpful versus what was unhelpful for me. I'm going to start with the unhelpfuls first. One thing that was unhelpful was when people would refuse to walk a mile in my shoes. I just really wish that more teachers and students had really taken the time to get to know me before they judge me. My grade 6 teacher, I remember, would just 100% convinced that I, all of my autistic traits and behaviors and challenges that I had were basically just there to derail her class and to agitate her. I was bullied really badly, not only by her, but I mean, at one point, a student actually slammed me into a wooden cabinet. At that point, she just said to the principal, well, he's annoying, he deserved it. If I had done that, I would have been suspended. But because, you know, this student had more or less, this teacher had justified it, he was just told, don't do it again. Even at that age, it was pretty, pretty upsetting. When I was 11 years old, and then my teacher pinched me because I wasn't standing in a neutral position. And that traumatized me because I used to sway and slouch whenever I stood, and those were my autistic traits. And because she pinched me, it kind of conditioned me and traumatized me to the point where I didn't like my autistic traits anymore. And I always would stand in a neutral position. And if a teacher or a colleague, like in present time, caught me where I wasn't standing in a neutral position, it, can, it freaked me out and I quickly corrected myself. Understanding and acceptance can happen without education. So it's not helpful when people aren't open to receiving that education. In grade six, when I had this teacher who was convinced that my autism was completely a more or less a maneuver to uh, derail her class or to uh, upset her, and I remember that you know we provided her with plain language books at that time, VHS video cassettes, and even with uh, my mother offered to pay to send the teacher to a professional development seminar around autism, and gave her materials so that she could explain to the other kids in the class what autism was and to be able to understand me better and. Nope, I got shut away in the drawer and it was never used and so as a result the teacher never understood me better and just basically continued to assume that my autism was an excuse to behave badly and the student continued to not understand me and to pick on me. It's really about being open to learning from other people and their lived experiences and to accept that even if you have a higher education and even if you are an educator, you can learn a lot from your students, especially students who see the world in a way that's much different than neurotypical students and teachers. Students have IEPs for a reason and it's not helpful when the teacher doesn't follow them. I was accused of being plagiarizing in grade 11 and my grade 11 teacher yelled at me at the top of her lungs in front of everyone in the hallway and then I started to tear up. I reminded her that she allowed me to copy the textbook word for word so that, so that I can use it for school purposes only and that was outlined in my IEP and then she realized that she, that she made a mistake and she apologized and her demeanor changed. What's unhelpful is not allowing me to talk to a, or letting anybody on the spectrum to talk to a teacher or somebody else in the classroom directly. And I found it really upsetting and really insulting when I would be in a class and I would put my hand up to ask a question or to speak and I would be more or less told that you need to ask your question through your educational assistant. That was basically saying that number one, you're not capable of asking an intelligent question. And number two, it was saying really that what you have to say isn't really important enough for me to listen to. It really makes you feel unwelcome and not valued. And a student doesn't want to get involved and, and participate in the discussion or to ask a question because they feel that they're lesser than. That was really what that felt like for me. If a person, regardless of their diverse ability, has a question or wants to, to speak in class, give them the same opportunity and that same respect that you would give every other student. What was helpful was when my resource teacher respected me when I started my boundary respectfully. Sometimes if I were to write a test in the resource center, the resource t teacher wouldn't let me leave the testing room until I finished my test and that would cause me problems for my next class because I would skip the next class and then I would get in trouble. So I told that to my principal and my principal said I have full permission to use her name to the resource teacher so I can finish my test after school. So then the very next time I had a test, I told the resource teacher respectfully and I said, the principal allows me to f finish the test after school so I can go to my next class now. The resource teacher respected that boundary and then I was able to finish my test after school. What's helpful is don't assume and do nothing. Ask and provide support. I remember when I was halfway through high school, I finally had a homeroom teacher who asked me the question that I wish 
every teacher had asked me. She said, I really want to learn from you and I really would like to learn how I can support you and how you see the world and when you're feeling anxious or upset, how I can make that a bit easier for you. And most of the time, if they didn't understand me or if they didn't feel they could help me, they would just say to the EA, okay, well, go help them over there. And, and I didn't really get any one-on-one -on -one attention from the teacher. To have a teacher really invest that much time in me and to really appreciate that I had a lot to offer and a lot that I could teach her, it meant a lot to me. And I'm still friends with that teacher to this day. What was helpful to me was when people stood up for me when I was badly bullied. People would constantly harass me and tease me and make fun of me. For example, I was in dance class and one of my peers from high school was picking up their sibling. They saw me dancing. The next day we were at the high school and everyone and all his friends were saying, dance for us, Jeanette, come on, dance for us. And then I said calmly back to them, no, not today, and I calmly walked away. And I told my vice principal that, and he said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And he did, and the next day they were nothing but respectful towards me. What's really helpful is um, group work, so getting to work with as many students in class as possible. And I remember, I loved, you know, during home economics class or drama class or other classes where we would do interactive group work, when I would get to uh, rotate around and work with different groups on different assignments, because that way, all the different students would get to know me better and really get a better understanding of me, but also I learned how to relate to them and to learn about who they were as well. So, I mean, I really found that if I could rotate around the class for each assignment, that by the end of the year, I would have been able to make a connection with every student and maybe we would be able to have a, a friendship or that there would be a much smoother classroom dynamic because of the fact that we had a better understanding of each other. If you know that you have a group of students with diverse abilities, don't say, okay, you're in the same group every time. It's really important to have people with autism or other diverse abilities integrated and working with when learning alongside other students. One last thing that was helpful was the school gave me supports that I needed to succeed. A big support that my principal granted me was unlimited time on tests, which is really helpful to me as I'm more verbal, and if I were to actually write my test, it would take me four times as long as the average person. So then my principal enforced that I get a reader and a scribe so that I can finish the test a lot quicker. And that was also really helpful for me because sometimes I misunderstand directions, so the reader would paraphrase and reread the directions so it would understand it. So what's helpful is supports instead of accommodations in order to thrive. Many autistic individuals prefer the word supports instead of the word accommodations because accommodations really suggest that society is doing us a favor by providing supports when those supports are our right. They're not a privilege. It's important to remember that we have a right to be able to participate and to be able to take part in our learning, you know, just as much as anybody else. If we need help to do that, then that's our right and something that should be given to us without question. I really believe that looking at how educators can support students, you know, with diverse abilities rather than accommodating them. Many teachers weren't too happy about having me in their class because the attitude was, oh, well, now I'm going to have to change the way that I teach, or now I'm going to have to just completely adjust my lesson plan for one student. Inclusion in the classroom means making sure that every student is empowered to have a positive, equal, and inclusive learning experience, regardless of whether they have a autism or any kind of diverse ability, or regardless of uh, any ability, really. We don't have to reinvent the wheel to identify where people need support and to provide that support. Thank you all for listening. I just wanted to say that I really am grateful that I had that principal and also my vice principal. They were truly caring people and they always gave me all the supports that I needed in order to succeed in school. Thanks very much for listening and I just want to close by saying really take the time to listen to, uh, to students with autism and with other diverse abilities and to learn from them. Don't assume that, you know, when you've met one individual with autism or one individual with um, any kind of diverse ability that their challenges and their experience is the only one that exists and that matters. So really, you have to look at everybody on an individual to individual basis and to really take that time to get to know them and to get to know their strengths, get to know what their challenges are and to support them from there. Thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah, all the best.